Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to talk about cycling, women's cycling in particular, that continues to be ruined by trans athletes. So over in Chicago, we have the usual suspects. They won gold and silver over there. And the women have to be content with winning third place. Fourth and fifth don't even make the podium when really they should have been second and third. And over in Boston, there was another race, Landmine Classic Mountain Bike Race. And it went to a male. And again, women just have to be okay with it or they're bigots. The woman who came second, who really was the rightful winner, she didn't appear on the podium. I can't imagine why, but I wanna start off with Austin Killips, who's associated with these two bikers over in Chicago who are dominating women's cycling because he is part of a truple with one of the cyclists. And I never saw Austin's reaction to no longer being allowed to compete in the women's Belgian waffle ride. They came to their senses and have introduced an open category now. And this is what Austin had to say. I am devastated by the UCI's decision to renege on the policy and framework they previously set out for my inclusion my journey in professional racing has allowed me to see the world, build lifelong friendships, and most importantly, give my absolute all to something I find deeply fulfilling. No one should be denied the opportunity to chase the same joy that I and others have found through racing. My four faults exceed the Instagram caption limits, so I've included them as images and share the text on my seldom used substack. Link in bio and included below. What's wrong with the open category? Please explain. That's for your inclusion, the open category. But of course, maybe you would have to compete against other males, other biological males if you were to enter the open category and it might not yield the same results. So it's the advantages that you had over women that you were enjoying not the inclusion. It was the unfair advantage that you were able to exploit and use to promote yourself, to elevate yourself within cycling. That's what you were enjoying, not inclusion, because your inclusion is there. These male athletes are able to compete in the sex that they were born into. They're able to compete with the sex that they match biologically. And now they've created categories just for them, but it's not good enough. In the swimming, nobody turned up for the open category. And likewise, in this case, the open category isn't good enough for them. So over in Chicago, we have Austin's truple friend and his partner in cycling, dominating, always at the top of the podium. Chicago needs to do something about this. Chicago has enough problems without now having to deal with their sports being ruined. Two transgender cyclists took home gold and silver at a women's cycling event in Chicago, sparking fresh controversy as only one biological female made the podium. Tessa Johnson, 25, won first place in the women's single speed and cat half categories at the Chicago Cyclocross Cup on October 7, while Evelyn Williamson, 30, placed second in the single speed contest. So Evelyn had to make do with second place this time because a biological male ended up beating Evelyn to it. Their efforts left only one biological female on the podium, but a single speed race. So these events come with prize money. Not as much prize money as the events that Austin Killips was a part of, but, you know, the winner for this event got $150 and the other one got $75. So Evelyn Williamson apparently has been in women's cycling since 2017. And in 2020, maybe Evelyn wanted to try out a little experiment and competed in the men's category, as well as the women's category. In the men's category, Evelyn didn't place. But of course, in the women's category, Evelyn is taking home gold medals. So clearly there's an incentive to compete in the women's category. If you wanna be somebody in sports, if you wanna be somebody in cycling, that's the way to go. And these cycling bodies, are allowing it. They're allowing the cheating. They're allowing them to take advantage, to exploit their unfair advantage and to make money doing it. So the annual event features 
Over a dozen different races and openly welcomes trans riders. If you have found your way to the CCC event to race your bike and hopefully have some fun in the process, then you're welcome here, organizers say on the website. No one's saying that you shouldn't welcome everybody, but put people in the correct categories. That's all we're saying, so that your events remain fair and aren't compromised, and you don't look like idiots. This is a mockery of women's cycling. It's a mockery of that event. Who's going to care to watch it even? Who's gonna come out and support it when everybody knows that the trans cyclists are going to win? Not because they have some superior sporting ability, but just simply because they're male and they are competing in the wrong category. It's one thing if it was a female athlete showing this level of superiority, people would come out and be like, wow, this is amazing. You know, she's in a class of her own. That has happened in female sports. The Williams sisters, they dominated tennis at first. People came out to see it. When it's because somebody is male competing against females, I don't see how anybody can respect that. I really don't. Unless you're one of these activists who think this group's rights supersede that of others. And there they are again. <laughs> Even with them being elevated, literally, you can see the difference. The female athlete is just there. <laughs> tiny, absolutely tiny compared to the blokes. And she's the only one. Her sisters are not on the podium with her. Because when you're competing, you respect the other athletes. You're competing against each other, but you're all in the same boat. You all work hard. You all bust your butt to get to where you're getting. So you respect one another. So those are her sisters who have been denied that place there. Now, I don't know how she feels about it. She's smiling there. But with all these female athletes, you never know whether they're smiling through the tears or smiling through the anger. I like the fact that in Boston, the woman who came second, the rightful winner, didn't show up for the podium. That's something, at least. Because when I see them standing there, smiling, grinning, I'm just like... <laughs> Why are you smiling while being a part of the downfall of your sports? That's not something to smile about. So she came third. She's lucky she made the podium. If there was another trans athlete. Oh my gosh. If Austin starts competing in this category, imagine. I don't know what the rules are. I don't know if you have to be from Chicago. Whatever he moves to Chicago and starts competing in that category, no woman is going to make the podium. And that's it. No woman is going to win prize money. Let me not give them any ideas. <laughs> but they will dominate and they will continue to ruin women's cycling. And then maybe then this cycling division may do something. CCC may decide to do something. Who knows? But all it takes is one more male to join their little union they've got going on. And we're not going to see a woman on that podium for a very long time. So I Heart Bikes was reporting on this, and this is the podium for the Landmine Mountain Bike Classic. So the rightful winner didn't show up. The third place athlete seems to be smiling, seems to be having a great time, but I'm sure there was some tension there considering that the second place podium is empty. And this is what we're going to see more of. And it's very, very concerning. I personally don't care to see more of this. For some reason, they're all going for the cycling now. <laughs> we don't see the men's category disrupted like we're seeing in the women's categories. So this is the category here. Category four women, 19 to 34. I'm not sure why it says open. So this race was 5.75 miles. So it's quite a fast race for, for cycling. And Gage Martin is the winner. And Gage Martin is the biological male, but obviously gender is, is down as woman. Second place, never appeared on the podium. And I'm not sure why it says open here. I'm not sure why it says open, because obviously it's not an open category. It's a women's category. And the person who won, who was a biological male, was classed as a woman. So it's only going to get worse as long as these sporting bodies continue to allow this. These trans athletes will catch on. 
to which ones are lenient, which ones are okay with this, and they will form an alliance, like we're seeing in the cycling. As far as I'm concerned, these two have formed an alliance, and they are going to take silver and gold, two gold medals in the, in the pair racing, and completely go from event to event, dominating, winning prize money, making a name for themselves, all because they're able to use their advantage over women their unfair physical advantage over the female athletes. And I haven't heard anything about them being required to be on hormones for a year, you know, like it was initially required in the swimming. I haven't heard any, anything about the requirements except to just identify as a woman. And we're seeing more and more examples of this in the powerlifting, the story that I did the other day. That's the only qualification, just identify as a woman because it's bigotry to expect more apparently. So yeah, it doesn't look good for women's cycling, especially in Chicago. Internationally though, there's hope. But women's mountain biking also doesn't look like it's going to be doing too well either. And then lastly, Democrat representative in Wisconsin has a message for female athletes who are complaining about having to compete against biological males. And my granddaughter, <laughs> who's playing college sports, I asked her about this when we had this two years ago, and she said, you know what? If a trans woman was competing against me in the sport, then that just means if that person's better than me, I need to work harder. So there you have it. We just need to work harder. If a trans woman is better than me, which is more than likely going to be the case because of their physical advantage, Women just need to work harder. Guarantee you, his granddaughter has never competed against a trans athlete. Never. Because she wouldn't say that. Unless she doesn't care about winning, unless she doesn't care about the integrity of her sports. Those who speak out against this have actually experienced it. His granddaughter sounds very naive. And he knows better, but he's still perpetuating the nonsense. So as a grown man, as a grandfather, he knows better, yet he's gaslighting female athletes and telling them that it's because they're not working hard enough. Why doesn't he have that same message for the trans athletes who are ranked 6,462, 8 or 9th? And that's, a, that's actually more impressive than what they usually are ranked. Cyclists who don't place when they're competing against males. Why does he not have the same message for them? Because when they're competing against a sex that matches their biology, they're not winning gold medals. They're not dominating. They win nothing, failing to even make the podium. Just tell them to work harder instead of cheating and entering into the female categories. How about that? But you're telling women to work harder in a situation where no matter how hard they work, they are never going to be men. They're never going to be males. They're never going to acquire the physicalities of a biological male, no matter how hard they work. And what's happening is they're taking positions away from females who work very hard. The average woman isn't achieving their times, their records. But now these records are being stolen by biological males who don't even have to work anywhere near as hard because they just simply have the advantage. Winning by five minutes winning by multiple seconds in a sprint, breaking records across the board. And Andreas is like the number one power lifter in Canada, in any age category, has matched world records, Olympic records. And I guarantee you, this person doesn't have to work anywhere near as hard as the females. Females who don't naturally build muscle as easily as a man can. That right there tells me that these athletes don't have to work as hard. These trans athletes don't have to work as hard. I've heard of college athletes in cross country. One spoke out saying that she overheard a coach of a trans athlete tell that trans athlete to ease up a little bit so it would look more realistic. So the gap wouldn't be so wide against the females. That's what she overheard. She had to hear that and listen to that. I'm going above and beyond, pushing my body to its limit. And I now have to hear a male athlete being told to ease up a little bit. 
competed against transgender track and field athlete June Eastwood, correct? Yes. What was it like competing? Um, I personally competed against uh, June in the DMR, um, so it was the distance medley relay, and we had different legs. And when I was waiting and I was cheering on my teammate, there were coaches on the sidelines, obviously, and they'll tell you sort of like, this is your cue, or like, this is where you're at, or come on, push it, go faster. And something that was really hard for me to hear was um, June's coach was on the sidelines telling June to slow down as June was in first place. And so that was something that was a true sticking point for me in this whole situation because I realized that this wasn't difficult for June. June had already competed at this level and faster before. And so even though they'd gone through this private hormone suppression therapy, it didn't seem as if it was really coming out as fair in any sense. So Leah Thomas just took first in the preliminary, set to compete in the finals tonight. How do you feel about that? Um, it's really discouraging seeing that Leah was able to beat the next competitor in second place by five seconds. I was trying to explain to some other people that are here that preliminaries are not as important as finals. The whole point of preliminaries is to get to the finals, and it's based on rankings and times and how you place in your specific heat. So the idea that this athlete was able to go ahead and beat second place by five seconds and then is having to do it again this evening just kind of proves the fact that we're all here kind of fighting is that it was an easy feat for this individual athlete to go ahead and participate at this level when other people may have been pushing themselves to their limit just to be able to get into the pre Limbs. It's unfortunate to see that somebody else may have exhausted a little bit more than this individual athlete had to. So how insulting to tell female collegiate athletes that they need to work harder if they find themselves in the most unfortunate situation having to compete against a, a male athlete. This person clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. He's blaming his granddaughter. Apparently his granddaughter said this. Well, I know for a fact that she doesn't have to compete against biological males. And when that time comes, we'll see if she still has the same sentiments. I doubt it. It's demoralizing. And it's not only the competition itself, it's what goes on behind the scenes in the locker room, for example. Leaving these female athletes more vulnerable. So yeah, Representative Dave Considine just thinks women need to work harder in sports so that we can compete at the same level as the men no concept of biology. If you're voting for these people, I can't help you. That right there tells me that this person doesn't need to be re-elected because he's on the side of misogyny. He has no problem publicly insulting women, publicly belittling women. He has no problem doing that. Hiding behind his naive granddaughter as well. I just read Riley Gaines' response. So Riley Gaines said... That's like someone saying, Rep Considine, if you want to grow hair on that bald, shiny head of yours, then just grow hair. <laughs> perfect, perfect response. Can you imagine? Wow. Just grow hair, Mr. Considine. There are things that are out of our control, no matter how hard you work. There are things that are out of your control. Being a woman <laughs> is one of them. No matter how much weights we lift, no matter how much training we do, that doesn't give us the ability to convert our strength into that of a man. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Kate said, if biology no longer matters, why didn't he work harder and take turns with his wife to carry and give birth to their children? <laughs> Genetically, Rep Considine could never grow hair. Apparently, he doesn't make that consideration for women who genetically share comparable constrictions. Sometimes, baldness is wasted on the wrong people. This tells me that his granddaughter had no chance of winning against women in the sport she was competing in. Yeah, and someone responded, I was a mediocre college athlete at best. Even if I wasn't going to win, I would still be pissed. If I had to compete against men, exactly. It's not even just about winning. People use the argument and say, well, this trans athlete didn't win. This trans athlete came fourth. This trans athlete came fifth. Apparently there was one event where Leah Thomas came last and people were like, ooh, see, see. Number one, I'm not convinced <laughs> because we've heard, you know, of coaches telling their, their athletes to, to ease up a little bit, their trans athletes to ease up a bit. So when I, you know, on those occasions where Leah Thomas didn't win, you know, I wasn't convinced that it was because the women were superior physically. No, <laughs> no, more than likely, Leah wanted to make it look a bit more realistic, in my opinion. 
But even in those situations, that doesn't make it right. Whether the trans athlete wins by five minutes or comes last, I don't care. They're in the wrong category. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and God willing, I will see you in the next video.